Your tag team partner is great. Yeah, she knows all the moves. You're lucky. What do you mean? Only that you could take it easy now. No way. I pull my own weight. Come on. If you could lift that much, you'd be in the Olympics. <laughs> I'm about to put you in traction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to all right, all right. Quiet down, girls. We've got a packed house tonight. It's standing room only. And I guarantee you won't hear any obscene language from the crowd. None of them can speak English. <laughs> I knew he'd get him. Nice shot, Stinky. Who are you two? I'm Sneaky. And I'm Stinky. We came down to bring you our application to become Glow Girls. Want to make something of it? So you're the ones who've been sending me those threatening letters. How'd you know? I recognize the crayon. <laughs> Riviera Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the show with more battling beauties, more amazing action, and more smiles per hour. The all-new Glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. We have got a humdinger of a show today, fans. The sweetheart of Hog Hollow, Nebraska, Babe, the farmer's daughter, locks up with the fire and brimstone preacher, Evangelina. The high-flying cheerleaders, Vicky Victory and Cheyenne Chair, take on the street punks from Brooklyn, Stinky and Sneaky. The Benedict Arnold of wrestling, Ninotska, battles the glow girl of the cosmos, Star. It's the avenue versus the street, as those Park Avenue knockouts, Tiffany Mellon and Roxy Asta, square off against those sexy street fighters, Hollywood and a cousin, Broadway Rose. And batten down the edges for another glow burst as two teams, led by Mountain PG and Big Bad Mama, collide head-on in a penalty box match. We'll be right back with all the action. I love when my fans say, Babe the Farmer's Daughter, your hair is beautiful. It attracts so much attention. Thanks to the new Fabergé Organic Shampoo and Conditioner with Pro Vitamin B5, my hair stays healthy and strong. So if you want beautiful hair with plenty of body and bounce, pick a winner and shout! Yay, Fabergé! Hi, everybody! Tiffany Mellon here with all the latest glow gossip. <laughs> Cheyenne Cher says her ideal man should be an Indian and an athlete. <laughs> Maybe she should scout the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Item. Broadway Rose was recently stuck in a crowded subway. <laughs> People were packed so tight together, Broadway Rose accidentally picked her own pocket. <laughs> Justice recently won a dance contest by moonwalking on top of dementia. <laughs> she said it's only fitting since dementia's a lunar tick. <laughs> you know, fans, there was a lot of competition for this job. <laughs> Dr. Grope was a strong contender because of his background in newspapers. <laughs> He used to help their circulation. <laughs> Ta -da.
star. Nice. All right. All right. All right. All right. The star of Forza is originally from Kiev, Russia. She now resides in Paris, France. Please welcome Ninochka! Ninochka! And star facing someone who's built more like an asteroid. A prancing pink asteroid. What is it, Star? What is it? My stars have shown me that she was unfaithful to Aunt Kitty and all the girls. And I think it's time for her to pay. Did you hear that, Ninochka? Star says it's... Oh, oh! Oh, and Ninochka takes it down with a leg drive. She sets and plows into Star with a drop kick. If she put all her weight into that one, Star would be in orbit. Hi, Glow fans. Motormouth Mike Morgan monitoring moves and maneuvers in the broadcast booth. And Ninochka's return to Glow has been taken as an insult to the grapplers, fans, and fashion designers everywhere. The Cosmic Girl slowed it down with that fist. And now she takes it over in a big monkey toss. The traitor has made herself a target by turning her back on her friends and fans. And with all that weight she's packed on, the target is as big as the side of a pink bomb. The Zodiac Grappler setting up for another monkey toss. Ninochka trying to collapse her foe. But Star booted her off. And the cowardly pink elephant seeks refuge outside the woods, illegally attacking her with those closed fists. Star has yet to even bend the rules while the blob began this match by striking before the opening bell. Ninochka's changed, all right, for the worse. The parasite goes for a sunset flip, but you can't even hold a foe down for a count of one. Put your weight in for a traitor, then you can count to 200. Fans, just compare the physiques on these two. Star is a well-conditioned, muscular athlete. And the blob? Well, she looks like a balloon from Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. And to think, she once held the glow crown. The only thing she can hold now is a charter membership to Overeaters Anonymous. She hauls Star up. No, the Cosmic Girl reverses and slams her down like so much trash. How the heavy have fallen. Star has gone from a peacock to a fine grappler, and the traitor has gone straight downhill. But Benedict Arnold has brought it on herself. She shunned everyone who was on her side to embrace the world of Twinkies and 31 flavors. The Zodiac Grappler breaks the leg scissors. The Pink Elephant has been unable to apply a hold for any length of time. She must be worn out from all those return trips to the buffet part of a new philosophy that rules and scales were made to be broken. Whoa! Tossing the blob over her back as if she were a feather. And that feather weighs more than I do. The Cosmic Girl has really gotten it together. She's been able to handle the traitor with ease. And Inachka is a ring veteran. She says she's young, but that's in dog years. Whoa! And a slashing kick to the head from out of nowhere, down star. Miss Pigovich knew her fat was in the fire, and she had to try a desperation move. The Zodiac Grappler almost knocked out. I wouldn't be surprised if Ninotka has loaded boots. And I mean with something else besides those pig feet of hers. Whoa, a leg drop to the throat. It may be a bad forecast for Star, but the blob doesn't go for the pin. She's liable to collapse the turnbuckle if she stands on it too long. And she flips off and lands with an elbow. Sure, when her opponent is out of it, she shows off. But in the heat of the battle, she could have phoned in her performance. And the traitor manages to steal a win. But don't expect a victory party, though. She ate everything before the match. Ninochka, you're a winner. And Ninochka, I have to tell you, you look very beautiful tonight. <laughs> Johnny C displays his lack of taste and need for glasses. Dr. Grope, I figure you must be an expert at vaccinations. How come, Roxy? You've been needling people for years. <laughs>
about this? If people want to show some political strength, why don't they exercise their right to vote? When fans go to sporting events hoping for a fight, doesn't it stop being good, clean fun? How can people go through plastic surgery and call the results the natural look? <laughs> Welcome back to Cold Adorned Ladies of Wrestling! This hot tag team explosion, introducing first from Brooklyn, New York, the New York Street Punks, Stinky and Sneaky! They have to be mean, aggressive, and have a poor sense of smell. Stinky met Sneaky in high school when they lived in adjoining lockers. Come on. Oh, right. well, Stinky catches the Indian with a spinning body press. But she doesn't hook a leg, and Cheyenne kicks out. The street punk lost all the effectiveness of that move by failing to follow up. The skunk-like creature mounts the corner, but no matter how fast she moves, her smell is there a half hour earlier. Cheyenne's here with that flying body press. Stinky wants to show the cheerleaders she can beat them at their own game. But that's a pretty tall order, as these two grapplers are currently unbeaten in tag team competition. Wait, Sneaky crawling along the perimeter of the ring, obviously living up to an aim, and she decides to chew on Vicky Victory's leg. She's sneaky and hungry. Vicky able to batter away. The two grapplers in the ring size each other up. Stinky charges, Ali Frog, and the odorous offender gets a naga knocker from the turnbuckle. So far, our partner has yet to make it into this match officially. Cheyenne Shear sets her up into the ropes. A duck down, and Vicky catches her with a double chop to the throat. Now that's teamwork. The cheerleaders specialize in fluidity and grace, and Stinky specializes in crudity and disgrace. Vicky tags in, Stinky charges, oh, and she catches her with a kick right to the solar plexus. She went down as if she were shot, and air victory gets set for another flight. Whoa, a split and...
sneaky, you've got graffiti all over your face. <laughs> Stinky taking over on Vicky Victory, and Sneaky holds her leg for some double teaming. Oh, crashing down on her limb, and the skunk just pushes the official away. She goes back to her dirty work. But Vicky Victory says, clean up your act, and boots are over the top rope. But Sneaky holds tight to that leg. Maybe she was fighting it earlier to soften it up. The two Brooklyn punks single-minded in their attack. Actually, single-minded is an overstatement. I don't think they've got a brain between them. The ref breaks up the assault, but the street girls are on her again, like mustard on a Coney Island hot floor. And Sneaky goes for a finger sandwich. I guess Aunt Kitty doesn't feed a girl. Of course not. She takes literally a sign that says, all you can eat. Sneaky, really gnawing away on the girl from Vicksburg. She must like southern cooking. Now they're stretching her out like a rubber band, and they go back to work on a tortured limb. They don't want the cheerleader to have a leg to stand on. Sneaky's costume looks like a graffiti artist's nightmare. I haven't seen that much color in action since MTV fell into the washing machine. Sneaky on the ropes again. But Vicky says this is where you get off. The cheerleader trying to make it to her feet, and she decides to take Sneaky off first. Whoa, almost slingshotting her off that rope. The cheerleader sets and uses her like a gymnastics horse. Now she mounts the turnbuckle. Sneaky rises, calling Vicky Victory out. And the cheerleader leaps for her. No, Sneaky yanked her leg out from under her in midair, and the girl from Vicksburg crash lands. Stinky and Sneaky know if they take a point of balance away from the cheerleaders, they can nullify their aerial attack. Hey, yo, you two cheerleaders say you got a tough competition? You ain't seen nothing yet, baby, till you step in the ring with the New York Street Punks. Stinky and Sneaky. Right, Sneaky? Where'd she go? Uh. And the cheerleader takes over on the punk. That side headlock, weakening her opponent and allowing Vicky to get her breath back. This match has been snow picnic for the victory girl. Her leg has been pounded more times than Judge Wapner's gavel. Sneaky struggling, trying to weasel out of this like she used to do with detention in high school. Vicky trying to ram her into the turnbuckle. No, the punk blocked her, and she hauls her up. Ooh, and into a spine breaker. Her tailbone may not be breakfast cereal, but it just went snap, crackle, and pop. She hauls her up. Into the ropes. Vicky leapfrogs out of dodge and quick tags a partner. Whoa, and she tags Sneaky with a perfect drop kick. And she hits the canvas like a load of wet laundry. Come to think of it, in that get up, she looks like a load of wet laundry. She follows up. No, a reversal. And Sneaky flips her over the shoulder. The Indian sprawled out over the Fabergé sign on the ring. But any product related to grooming has got to be foreign to Sneaky. If you told her to put moose in the hair, she'd probably go out hunting for Bullwinkle. And her partner is even worse. The only time Stinky enjoys a day at the beach is when toxic waste washes ashore. Cheyenne Shea has been unable to recoup so far, but instead of moving in for the kill, Sneaky has been parading around the ring. If this one grappler doesn't get a one brain cell in gear, she's going to lose her advantage. Despite all the color, Sneaky is very dim bulk. Now she holds the Indian up. She takes her around. And into the ropes. Four, a body slam. No, she flips out and kicks Sneaky's leg out from under her. Whoa, what a cannonball. If the street punk had any stomach muscles, they're scrambled now. Cheyenne rolls her up, but Sneaky able to power out. Both on their feet now. And the cheerleader boots her into the corner. Wow, she threw her the entire length of the ring with that monkey flip. Sneaky's back has got to be ready to put in for a vacation after that landing. She struggles up, chair locks her into an arm bar, and takes her over, scissoring the other arm, and Sneaky is trapped like a tie-dyed rat. Wait, what's this? Stinky is punishing her own partner, whacking her with that bone. There is dissension in the ranks, and these two are about as rank as you can get. Oh, where are the cheerleaders? Oh, where are the cheerleaders? The cheerleaders! Hello, 
here on the air with Godiva, giving you all the bare facts. Hi, I'm Daddy of Archery Street. Do you think he's the right man for me? Of course. As far as I'm concerned, archers are right on target. <laughs> Next caller. Yeah, baby. You know, you're a real shot in the arm. And you're a real pain in the neck. <laughs> Next caller. Yes, I've just broken up with a dry cleaner. Do you think he'll make any trouble for me? No. Dry cleaners aren't known to air their dirty linen in public. <laughs> That's all for now, loves. Talk to you soon. DJ, we're really rocking tonight at the Glow Disco. <laughs> hey, we got a few new releases here at Glow, and most of them were released from the state penitentiary. <laughs> hey, I don't think the good girls are into the music scene. Justice thought that La Bamba was something that came with a fuse in it. <laughs> hey, we're planning a dance contest here at the Glow Disco. And I think that Cheyenne Cher should do the jerk. After all, it's only natural for her. <laughs> Evangelina getting caught with a hand in the till and trying to make Babe repent for it. She catches her in a farmer's carry, and here comes the sermon. If Moses ever heard Evangelina, there'd be another commandment. Thou shalt not run thy mouth. Oh, slamming her into the mat. Now, declaring the farmer's daughter to be a sinner. Come on, Evangelina. Let she who is without sin cast the first stone. Your past is about as spotty as a convention of leopards. I know for a fact Babe attended church regularly back in Hog Hollow. She went every Saturday to beat the rush. She hurls her to the corner and starts a choking assault, furiously massaging her throat. The ref calls for the break, but Evangelina goes right back to her attack. She is driven, or she should be, driven away. And the fanatic throws herself on the mercy of the ref. But Babe just throws her down. Beautiful big splash. But the preacher able to power out. She's breathing fire and brimstone. You know, lots of friends of mine have lost a lot of money to people like Evangeline. So during this match, I'm going to make her pay. Babe hoping for a little retribution. Evangelina says charity begins at home, and that's where she keeps all the donations. Conqueror leapfrogs over her and flies like an angel with a perfect body press. Babe gets the nods. 
striking down the holy preacher. The farmer's daughter is in seventh heaven. The winner of the match, Beam, the farmer's daughter! Look at for more glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling! Waitress! Oh, waitress! Yeah, what do you want? Listen, stupid! These eggs aren't even scrambled! up to no good. Hey, babe, the farmer's daughter, this stuff is way good. Faber's Organic Shampoo. Of course, wimp. Well, I use it too. What's that? It's the new Faber's Organics easy to use dispenser with pro vitamin B5. <laughs> hey. Yeah? Ah, uh, this stuff's too good to hit you with. Well, I always have a supply of the new Faber's Organics shampoo and conditioner. So should you. Hollywood, now stop that, Hollywood. Baby, I thought you said fruit was smart. Oh, babe, it is. Well, I talked to some melons and they didn't know anything. Ooh, that's funny. My honey do. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Glow! Gorgeous ladies of the wrestling! This is a tag team spectacular! First, from New York City and Los Angeles respectively, the East West Coast Connection, Broadway and Rome! Mention money and Hollywood and her cousin are already scheming. Of Hollywood and Broadway roles, your opponents tonight. Oh, you bag. You look like old bags, including the leather ones, too. Hollywood hurling invectives at the Park Avenue knockouts, distracting them. And Broadway roles scoots off with their purses. I can't believe Tiffany and Roxy would be foolish enough to leave those bags unguarded like that. And the sweet girls get ready to count their loot. some snakes in the grass. And the East-West Connection doesn't take kindly to that prank. They charge their opponents. Rose, still smarting from the joke, tries to make the golden girl pay with pain. She sets her up and grinds her foot into her forehead. 
This match had been billed as the Avenue versus the Street, and Tiffany tells her to hit the road all together. Tiffany may look like a bit of fluff, but don't be fooled. The giggly grappler knows how to fight. Ask anybody she shops with. Whoa, and she almost has Broadway Rose shopping for a new head. After that clothesline, Tiffany's a lioness in gold glamé, and she knows the world of culture. After all, she's been thrown out of the finest finishing schools. And now Broadway Rose throws her for a loop with that arm drag. Both she and her cousin Hollywood would like nothing better than to notch a win here and prove the street girl's superiority over the avenue dwellers. And Broadway Rose has been attacking like a cave dweller, stomping and choking. But the street girls can get down and dirty. Rose breaking just before being disqualified. Now having some words for the ref that certainly weren't happy birthday. She goes back after a fray, holding her tight with a handful of hair. Tiffany's locks are off in the target. Now if Rose uses any spray in her hair, it's probably Raid. Whoa, the Park Avenue pulverizer knocked Broadway Rose into the ropes and Tiffany completes the job, forcing her over and onto the arena floor. The Golden Girl happy with this turn of events. And Rose looks for the exit round. She tags her cousin outside. Not a legal move, but the only time these girls ever used a rule was to smack somebody in the head with it. The street fighters have been on the receiving end so far in this one, and in terms of punishment, it's always better to give than to receive. Tiffany, setting for a splash. Whoa, but there's nobody home. Hollywood able to roll away, and the knockout almost gets knocked out. Now Rock kicking her into the corner. Roxy wanting to tag in, and Hollywood trying to break it up. The tag is made. The knockout leaps in, and the street gal welcomes her with open arms. Oh, a double arm drag. Roxy taken by surprise. The Californian going for an arm lock. Trying to wear her bow down, really working the hole. Roxy hasn't felt this much pressure since the time all the credit card payments came due on the same day. Into the ropes, and a rolling tackle takes to that. Tiffany and Roxy, you better watch out for Broadway and I. It's going to be the street girls against the Avenue girls, and we're going to run you down. Roxy able to escape that surfboard hole. These two teams have been giving it all they've got. And if this match wasn't acting enough, we've got that incredible penalty box match coming up next. And next week, the run for the Rubies returns with a vengeance as these two grapplers, Hollywood and Roxy, square off in an elimination bout. Maybe that's why they're punishing each other so much right now. An injury here would give a wrestler the upper hand next week. Whoa, and Roxy caught her in a sunset flip, but Broadway Rose breaks it up. Tiffany comes in to even the odds, but Hollywood decks her with a double arm drag. The street girls taking over on the knockouts now. And Aunt Kitty distracts the referee to give her girls the chance to cash in on the momentum. The only time Aunt Kitty ever builds up momentum is with a knife and fork in her hands. You can bet any beating taken in this match will be carried over into next week's Hollywood and Roxy clash. Also meeting in the run for the Rubies bouts will be Zelda the Brain and MTV and Beastie and the Superhero Lightning. That's all next week on Glow. Hollywood and Broadway Rose kicking away. They know how painful that rowboat can be, but Tiffany and Roxy will not be denied. And they put the rowboat on the street girls, stretching their hamstrings, their muscles stinging in pain. <laughs> Seeing Hollywood and Broadway Rose in the ring makes me think that somebody forgot to take out the trash. <laughs> Tiffany and Hollywood grapple on the arena floor. You knew it was only a matter of time before the ring became too small to contain this one. Rose trying to perform a little premature plastic surgery, breaking a face like a pile of autumn leaves. Now, hauling her up. Into the ropes. Oh, a vicious knee doubles her over. The street girl pounding a midsection. And she takes her down with a head scissor. Broadway Rose and Hollywood know all the classic wrestling maneuvers, but Aunt Kitty would rather have them punch, kick, and gouge. In her book, cheetahs always pass by. Tiffany trying to keep Hollywood from getting back to the ring. The knockout believing they can divide and conquer the street girls. And conquer is the right word, because this one has been a war from the opening bell. The two of them grapple near exhaustion. Rose corrals Roxy and snap nails her down, stepping up the attack. She drags the knockout up, setting her up for another mare. No, the Park Avenue girl blocks it. She locks up Broadway's arms and pulls her into a backslide pin. And the Avenue gets the Duke over the street. Roxy and Tiffany have the bragging rights of the boulevard over Hollywood and Broadway Rose. Broadway! Roxy and Tiffany! 
Parts of my wardrobe are Fabergé organics. Sure, with our money, we can afford anything. But why spend a million to look like a million? And who says money can't buy everything? Oh, Roxy, that's rich. So is Fabergé, too. <laughs> Don't be a fool, fool. Use Fabergé. Your mama knows best. Where are you going on your day, Tulsa? We're gonna go gambling. Really? That's right. He told me if I played my cards right, I was gonna get lucky. Wow. Right. <laughs> we're, go. we're going mountain climbing. For sure? Yeah. He said that he's gonna be at his peak tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to the commits an infraction of the rules, they will be banished to the penalty box. The glow penalty box over here. Now introducing first, the team captain by Big Bad Mama. The team is Dementia, the Diva, and Beastie. Captain by Big Bad Mama. Team number two, Captain by Mountain Fiji, Zelda the Brain, Justice, and Daisy. That's right, fans. Daisy, Daisy, now free of Gremlina, has volunteered to help Mountain Fiji in her crusade against rule breakers. <laughs> you know, with Fiji, Daisy, and Justice on one team, Zelda the Brain is almost lost in the crowd. You know, Johnny, see, first of all, I want to know whose bright idea was this penalty box? You know, I don't know who you need it for. You might need it for them. Because me and my girls are always about all the rules and regulations of wrestling. Now, you might need it for these girls because they have to do anything. Hey, excuse me. Listen, as a girl's good, as a good girl's team captain, we just want to make sure that you follow by the rules. We are always, we right, always follow by the rules. Right. You know that we always follow by the rules. And Johnny C is almost buried in an avalanche of giants. High glow fans, Motor Mouth Mike Morgan calling the shots for this Paramount pageant presenting penalties upon Hug Nation participants. This is another first for Glow. Once a wrestler is caught in an infraction of the rules, they'll have to serve time in the penalty box. Godiva battling justice and dementia pounding a former partner Daisy, and the bulky Britain takes down the extra. I'm partner. glad it's about time that we've got the penalty box match. And Big Bad Mama, let me warn you, I don't care who you're bringing, we're gonna throw away the key, and Fiji will take care of it all. Big Bad Mama's team may have the advantage in a match that uses hockey rules. After all, Dementia wears a goalie's mask, and Beastie's about as smart as a puck. The Spuds McKenzie of the ring has been pounding Zelda into that ring post, and the huge Samoan and the Voodoo Queen have been trading blows since the outset. Their feud has been raging without a letter, and the Glow Commission was willing to suspend the run for the Rubies for one week so the other grapplers could aid them in this match. The bundle from Britain trying to fend off justice, she locks her into a patented leg scissors. The ex-cop struggling to free herself, and Beasties trying to gnaw a piece off of Zelda's arm. She's the first to be sent to the penalty box, but she doesn't want to let go of the brain's arm. I guess she admires her good taste. The match will continue either until a fall is gained or one entire team is thrown into the penalty box. And they better have some newspapers in it for Beastie. Z 
Zelda knocks Godiva off justice, and security has finally got the beast into the box. You'd have had the vet spuds would be the first one in the doghouse, and they put a chain on the missing link. The penalty box light flashes like a hockey net when a goal scores. Maybe it'll help keep Beastie on ice. Godiva takes the big flower down in that head scissors. Even though Beastie's gone, the action is moving at a furious pace. Justice shows Dementia the long arm of the law with a shot to the midsection. Dementia goes for a choke, and the ex-cop does the same. She tightens her grip, forcing it to break. And the referee is warning Justice to break now. The ex-cop is set on dismantling Dementia, but if she's not careful with that chokehold, Justice may find a babysitting Beastie. That's it. The referee has just sentenced her to the penalty box. The ex-cop can't believe it, but that choke put her own head in the noose, and security comes to escort her away. This has to be a first. Justice forced to serve time. Oh, it looks like time has run out for Zelda. Dementia is making her a substitute for one of her rag dolls. And she dumps her over the ropes. And Big Bad Mama has Fiji cornered, standing on the rope for leverage with that chokehold. But that blatant infraction isn't the ticket to victory, it's a ticket to the penalty box. And suddenly, with Mama headed there, it's going to be awfully crowded. Dementia flings Zelda aside, and Fiji decides to serve tea before Mama leaves. And she's starting by giving her a few bumps. And a guard comes to escort the voodoo queen to the penalty box. Look, she's even bigger than the burly officer. The exhausted behemoth goes along with security. Sure, after battling with Fiji, she'd be glad to take on the box. It doesn't hit back. Zelda the brain scales the corner. And Daisy has got a death grip on Godiva's hair. The referee counts for the break. And Zelda launches herself into Dementia with a shoulder block. Dementia is down, but it's Daisy who's out. The referee banishing her to the penalty box for the hair pull. And the ring has emptied considerably while the penalty box is reaching critical mass. And the bulky Britain may have the brain in critical condition. Daisy is ordered to the penalty box while Justice and Mama go at it tooth and nail. I wonder if you can get a penalty in the penalty box. Godiva and Zelda grapple on the arena floor, and they're about to earn themselves a spot in the box as well. Wait, Mama's leaving the box. Listen here, Mold Hill Fiji. My girls don't break the rules. They break heads. And when you mess with me and my girls, the penalty is death. That box will be your final resting place. Do you understand me? Do you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Big Bad Mama escaping the penalty box and attacking Mountain Fiji. Justice corralling dementia to prevent a two-on-one attack. And Beastie has run a month. She's tearing the penalty box apart. I knew she was built like a record ball, but now she's thinking like one too. She's free and charging faster than Tiffany on a shopping spree. That penalty box couldn't hold her. She needs a rubber room. All the grapplers are out now. There's mayhem in and out of the ring. The beast going after the brain, trying to remove a head altogether. Godiva pulling Daisy out of the ring by a hair, paying her back for the assault on her dresses before. As far as I can gather, the Voodoo Queen's illegal return to the ring caused her team to be disqualified. Even the penalty box couldn't contain the fury of this one. Winner, and we're coming back with more of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Girl in glove. Zelda's looks are easy to explain. Her best feature is her brain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. As a result of Ninochka relinquishing the glow crown, the commission has decided to fill the championship vacancy with a tournament. The greatest tournament in the history of wrestling. The Run for the Rubies. 20 of the top female grapplers in the world will meet in a series of elimination matches with a winner moving on to the next level of competition. There will be five semi-finalists and one berth filled by an incredible wild card battle royal. They'll meet head on until there are three finalists. They will face off until only one wrestler remains, and she will be crowned the new Glow Champion. Who will capture the crown? It's the World Series and the Super Bowl all rolled into one. It's the
the greatest tournament in the history of wrestling, the Run for the Rubies, right here on Glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Hey, I'm Hollywood. Sure, I like to party, but I know enough to stay away from drugs. If anyone tells you getting high is great, they're lying. Because too many people who tried to get high have wound up six feet under. I heard Big Bad Mama sent a limousine for Roxy. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Too bad it missed! <laughs> Broadway Rose says she's just like the streets. Well, that's probably why her mind's in the gutter. <laughs> I heard Mountain Fiji always remembers her homeland when she eats. Yeah, she keeps asking for some more. <laughs> Aunt Kitty's really put on weight. <laughs> yeah, she's so big, she has to have her passport photo taken by satellite. <laughs> Babe the Farmer's daughter is really at home in the fields. So are the other scarecrows. <laughs> I heard Beastie needs only two things for a good date. Yeah, a whip and a chair. <laughs> hey, there's two ways to be cool. One is to be Hollywood. The other is to own a glow t-shirt. Dad, we didn't make any money tonight, but you wait till next week. Hello? Hello? Hey, Squid, you wanted to see me? Yes, Melody. Since you have concert experience, I thought maybe you could help me figure out why our matches don't make any money. That's easy. It's because you don't feature me enough. You 